Welcome back to Tabletop Titans and another Titan Tactics. The Tau are a book that has been very powerful ever since its launch, and I've seen a number of changes and nerfs to try to tone it down. Over the past few months, it's been not winning all the podiums, but has been doing quite well, and uh, we're going to see a number of changes in Arcs of Omen. Don't panic, there is bad news, but overall, we think that there is still hope for the Tau army. Let's take a look. And of course, if you do enjoy this content, don't forget to like and subscribe, and hit that button right down below. We greatly appreciate it. Let's dive on in. So first of all, let's talk about the good for Tau in the Arcs of Omen. Right off the bat, Armor of Contempt is gone. Now, while Tau was an army that could definitely deal with Armor of Contempt, just leaning further into Plasma and uh, Fusion and all that good stuff, uh, they'll be happy to see it gone because there are a number of very high value weapons, uh, particularly the uh, heavy burst cannons. Uh, any burst cannons with mid, mid uh, to low AP are gonna be super happy to see that gone, as well as the airburst fragmentation projectors, which are also AP1. So Armor of Contempt being gone is a great tool to unlock for the Tau, especially as we look at these points increases, because generally the weapons benefiting from it being gone are the cheaper, uh, option. The new Arcs of Omen detachment is by and large a good thing for the Tau army. Uh, no longer do you need to take an extra patrol to get an extra commander. You can just have two within one detachment and simply pay one extra command point for that extra slot. The other benefit to the new detachments, of course, is the inclusion of Lords of War within the single detachment and no extra command points. Uh, so this is going to allow you to take, yes, of course, Tau and ours, but really I think we're talking about Storm Surges here. And Storm Surges, more specifically, that can benefit from Sept abilities. Uh, there's some interesting options here. Of course, you always have the keywords, so you can do strats and all that good stuff, but now you can be looking at making your Storm Surges more durable or more consistent with like Tau Sept rerolls. Uh, I think it's something interesting to play with now. And of course, last but not least, there is no need for that troop tax for Tau armies. Over the last few months, most competitive Tau armies weren't leaning very hard into troops. It was pretty minimal. Uh, we're looking at maybe some Kroot or a Breacher squad or so to be able to score on uh, aerospace, but uh, overall pretty light. And so being able to lean away from that is gonna be a big boon to Tau armies and might help make up the differential in points on the increases on other stuff. So now, of course, let's talk about the bad news. The big one, in my opinion, is of course the changes to flyers overall, but it definitely feels like a relatively targeted hit on the Sunshark Bomber. Uh, now, if you're a flyer, you have to start in reserve. And in addition, you cannot drop bombs in a turn in which you fly off the table. This means that for a Sunshark Bomber, there's not gonna be any bombing runs before turn three. Uh, it does sound pretty bad, because that is, of course, a big benefit of running the bomber. However, uh, I will say we didn't see any points increases, and it's going to be closer to essentially if you went second. But really, what this comes down to is you're going to lose that Alpha Strike capability, right? You're not going to be able to come in on the board turn one and have the bombing run, and as well as the shooting. You're just going to be forced to come in two with the shooting and no bombing. So it's not great, for sure, but it's also not the end of the world. And I think while we'll see less of these bombers, they're still going to see the table. Of course, points increases, as I've alluded to previously. Uh, we've seen moderate increases across most competitive units, and we'll dive into that in a bit more in just a second. We also discussed the fact that you can have an extra commander in one detachment for just one command point. Well, Farsight already basically let you do this uh, for free. And while they're still going to let you get that extra commander for free, it's not going to unlock an additional commander. So Farsight, just like every other Tau Sept, is going to be locked down to two commanders max, uh, unfortunately. So that is a big hit to, I think, probably one of the most popular competitive uh, SEPs today. So let's talk about points. Commanders saw a 10 point increase, which I think is totally fine, totally fair. Uh, they all cost different points, but they're just 10 points up in general, and they're still great units. So this is a minor slap on the wrist, I would say. Crisis, on the other hand, saw a five point increase. They're going from 40 to 45, and really this is gonna be punishing lists that are spamming out a ton of Crisis. I think it obviously is not ideal, but again, not really a big deal breaker. The generic ethereal went up 10 points uh, from 80 to 90. Uh, this one's interesting because in my mind, it makes more and more of a case for running something like Tau Sept uh, because now suddenly you're looking on Va, who's only 100 points, that 10 point differential, you get a lot for that. And combined with the fact that you're maybe not looking at Farsight uh, as much as you were before, I think makes Tau Sept more and more interesting moving forward. Last of all, the Crute Carnivore saw a single point increase from six up to seven. Again, kind of slap on their wrist. They maybe were a little bit too cheap, but I don't think it's the end of the world. It's not really gonna stop you from taking any more units of Crute. So overall point changes, not that bad, I would say, and, and honestly not one of the ways that in which they were hurt the most. So what do I mean by that? We talk about the way that Tau has been, been positioned after the Arcs of Omen release. And I think, yes, the flyer changes hurt, yes, the points hurt, but there's a lot of good things, as we mentioned thus far. And this truly is the tale of Tau in this new release. I think they got some good, they got some bad, but most importantly, everyone else kind of shifted around them, and that is going to have the single biggest impact on the way that you play Tau. 
Uh, let's talk about some of these things and some of the implications. I think Riptides are very interesting. I don't know if they're good, I don't know if they're bad, but I will say this. They're very good at killing Marines. You can take the high AP uh, gun, or you can take the Burst Cannon for just a ton of AP2 for two damage. Great at killing Space Marines. However, we also know Space Marines are gonna be taking a lot more heavy weapons. And uh, in that case, Riptides are gonna be pretty ideal targets. So there's definitely gonna be something to look at for uh, Riptides moving forwards. Uh, looking at other natural predators or prey in the meta, the Imperial Guard, I think gonna be a very tough matchup for the Tau. Uh, in a straight up firefight, they're likely to lose. Uh, and a lot of the weapons I just mentioned are gonna suffer into minus one damage, Lehman Russes or Hordes or whatever. Uh, so this matchup becomes a lot more about the maneuverability that you have, and this is something that they still maintain over the guard. Additionally, the Airburst Fragmentation launchers are gonna become much more interesting, not only in this matchup, but in other matchups as well. As mentioned, with the losing armor of contempt, I think they're a bit more compelling against Space Marines, but this also means you'll have them for the Guard matchup, the Marine matchup, and the Eldar matchups. Being able to shoot out of line of sight is gonna be increasingly important. And speaking, of course, of the Eldar, uh, Harlequins did see a big nerf, and they were one of the predators of the Tau, uh, as well as the Nids. These were both armies that were relatively tough matchups for Tau, sort of not unwinnable, but them getting taken down a peg is really going to help uh, the Tau move up in the slots. So really what this all comes down to is there's still lots to learn, um, but we need to be able to start adjusting to what other armies are taking in the meadow, what's going to work, what's not going to work, because ultimately I think there's a bit of both with Tau. So it comes down to what in the coming weeks are we going to see in the other kinds of lists. So what do we think we can expect from Tau in the near future? This is the Titan take. Well, we'll definitely see less flyers than before, less Sunshark bombers, but as I mentioned, I still think we'll see them around and they're not a terrible unit. I think we're gonna see many lists with a core of one or two big crisis teams to kind of save on the points there and also play with uh, Strike and Fade uh, and the extra maneuverability that they have in an era in which if you're visible, you're probably dead. I definitely think we're gonna see more Tau Sept and less uh, Fireside Enclaves for all the reasons I mentioned earlier, not getting extra commander slot, uh, looking at things like Anva and uh, now also, in fact, getting rerolls uh, for these big units such as Storm Surges, which are going to really benefit from that set. And last of all, this is a trend that we're seeing across many of our armies right now. We think we're going to see more skew builds. There's going to be people, maybe lots of people, that say, hey, I don't have to take any troops at all. Don't worry about that. I can get six heavy slots and not lose any command points off that. So lists with you know, lots of, you know, maybe three Riptides, three Hammerheads, just mega skew. And so be prepared for that. And uh, if you're one of those people, hey, have fun. So let's take a look at a couple lists. This first list is just some initial thoughts around Tau and looking at some potential trends. I think we're still looking at taking two commanders. Uh, I think a Cold Star and a Crisis uh, are probably the two top picks right now. In this list, we're looking at Tau Sept, which again, I think is very appealing with Anva for saving some points, saving some CP and not having to buy the Humble Staff. Uh, we're looking at uh, the big brick of Crisis, and uh, as, as far as loadout goes, you can see, still looking at Cyclic Ion, still looking at Plasma. Um, I just think that um, the heavy bursts are gonna be interesting on Commanders and Riptides and stuff like that. Uh, and then also, Airbridge Fragmentation Launchers in these kind of smaller utility squads that are jumping all over the place, maybe get obsec from the uh, Crisis Commander. Still very compelling. Uh, some Crew, some Breachers for scoring, some hounds, all still, I think, very compelling in the current meta. The second list, of course, tries to play around with these uh, skew model that we mentioned, uh, that we think we're gonna be seeing around. I think it's quite strong. Uh, in this case, again, looking at Tau Sept for those sweet, sweet rerolls that are very important on these units that have these high value shots. Uh, so I think, again, we're gonna be seeing Storm Surges, we're gonna be seeing Riptides, we're gonna see Hammerheads. Uh, all of these will suffer from the immense shooting coming from Space Marines, but positioning well, reserving well, all are interesting and useful tactics in the Tau player's arsenal when you're playing these more skew lists. Lots to think about when it comes to Tau. Overall, uh, I am excited to be playing with them and against them, uh, and we'll be, of course, playing them very soon on the channel. Let us know what you think in the comments below, and let us know what you are working on in Tau, and check out all our other content covering the Arcs of Omen. That's gonna do it for me. I'll catch you guys next time on the Tabletop. Uh, bye!